Hello, friends, and welcome to a, another edition of Digging Disciples. I am John Grigsby, your host. In the next few weeks, we're going to focus on the preparation of Christmas, preparing our hearts and our minds for the coming of the celebration of the coming of Jesus. And to do that, we, we, we focused in our Sunday school class on, on four things that we're going to talk about, um, or four people. Uh, one's John the Baptist. Next week, we'll talk about Mary, the Virgin Mother. The week of, actually, of Christmas, we'll talk about the shepherds. And then the week after, we'll talk about the wise men. So today, let's focus on John the Baptist. And John the Baptist uh, there's about six points I'd like to bring up to tell us a good or paint a good picture about who John the Baptist was and what was his importance in the coming of Jesus. So John was actually foretold and prophesied in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, I'll read here. It says, a voice of one crying out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make a straight highway for our God in the desert. And if you know anything about John, that's exactly what he did. He lived in the desert, lived in the wilderness, if you will. And his message was simply repent and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Prepare for the coming of Jesus. The next thing we'll learn about John is his days were designed by God. And if you look over to Luke chapter 1, and I'm, I'm not going to read all of it, but Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, it tells about how Gabriel came in and foretold the coming of John to his dad, Zechariah. And through this process, they, his John's mother and father was confirmed that John would be born and he would have a specific purpose in his life. And, and, of course, John's dad said, no, you know what, I'm too old. My wife is too old. There's no way that we are going to bear a child at this stage in our life. And, it said, and the angel said, well, if you're going to think that way, I'm going to mute your mouth until your son is born. Just more confirming the fact that this was a gift from God for a specific purpose, John the Baptist was. And, you know, that reminds me that, in, you know, in our lives, God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect in our lives. We don't think about it. Looking back, sometimes we can get a glimpse of it, but we don't realize how perfect God's timing is in our own lives. The next thing we learn about John is he grew up strong in the spirit. We don't get a lot of his growing up time or his uh, early ages, if you will. Other than in Luke chapter 1, verse 80, it says, The child grew up and became spiritually strong, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. So John spent lots of time by himself, personally, but I think he spent a lot of time talking to God. So he became spiritually strong. Well, how did he become spiritually strong? reading scripture, praying, God really fortifying you through, through those acts. I believe that's what John did by growing strong in the spirit. Now, the fourth thing we learned about John is he didn't let anything get in his way to keep his heart set on Jesus. And Luke 1 15, I'm going to read one little scripture about him. It says, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and will never drink wine or beer. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. So from the time of his womb to the time that he died, he didn't let anything get in the way of his purpose and to keep his heart set on Jesus. So by living in the wilderness, wearing simple clothes, eating simple foods, right? He had no great house to, to live in. And they, it says he drunk no strong drink. He didn't let anything cloud his mind, is what he's saying, 
to where he cannot be always focused, always ready to give an account and point the way to Jesus. And as I thought about that, I thought, you know, what things of this world take us away from focusing on Jesus? <laughs> There's quite a few things, if you think about it, aren't they? Quite a few things keep us from focusing on Jesus. But we'll think, ah, I'll be okay. No, really, we're not. We need to do more things of keeping the world out and keeping our mind on Jesus. The fifth thing we learned about John, he lived solely to point others to Jesus, and he was obedient to his purpose. In John 30, uh, John 3.30, it says, I must increase and he must increase, talking about Jesus. John must decrease and Jesus must increase. It should be the same about us. We should be less pointing more to Jesus, less about me, more about Jesus. That's really John's message. That should be our message as well. And the sixth point about John, he was willing to speak the truth right up to the point of death. And he died not wavering from his message. He never, they never said, oh, if you'll just quit bad-mouthing Herod and his, his wife for, for what they were doing wrong. No, he wouldn't do it. He was speaking the truth, and he was not going to vary from speaking the truth, and he wound up with his head on a platter. It cost him his life doing exactly what he was supposed to be do, doing. So a couple of questions I, I want to leave you with on this part of it is, would Jesus have came to the earth if John did not fulfill his mission? And the answer is yes, he would have. But the good thing about John is this was God's design. It was God's design to put John in preparing the people getting ready for Jesus. God designed the whole thing. Could he have done it without him? Yes, he could have. But that was the way that the God designed it, the way that God wanted it to be. And the next question I think we should take away from, the, from knowing about John is also, what mission does Jesus have for me? And what mission does Jesus have for you? He has a mission for each of us. He has a goal. I have certain things I can do in my life that you can't do, and you have certain things to do in your life that I can't do to help win others to Christ, to help point others to Jesus. We have a very unique mission. Each of us have a very unique mission, and it's up to us to stay in that mission, stay focused, get rid of the worldly things and focus on making more of Jesus and less of me. In this week's dirt section, we're looking at someone else's dirt, my neighbor Victor. Victor had one of his legs amputated right above the knee and needed a new deck and handicap ramp on the back side of his house. So my discipleship group that I belong to at church, we gathered this past Saturday and started the deck, didn't finish it. But I had a great time working together, fellowshipping, working hard, and spending time with, with Victor. It truly was a great day, and we'll have to go back to finish it soon. Thank you for watching this edition of Digging Disciples. And until the next time, I hope that you are blessed as you navigate the seasons of life.